Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand clap. Praise God. is getting better. The ministry is shorter. We welcome everybody. God is in here. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, the Spirit of God just keeps getting thicker and thicker and thicker. Amen. Amen. There's glory in what God's doing. Direct your hands out here. Let's agree together. Pray for everybody joining us on the internet and we watch this service. Father God, we come together right now as brothers and sisters in the Lord, as co-heirs yes. of Christ Jesus, yes. as fellow ministers. We release our faith right now that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of revelation will flow, the spirit of understanding will increase in our hearts and minds right now. That our hearts are enlarged to receive. Our minds take on the mind of Christ to comprehend. Our souls are hungry and thirsty after the presence and revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, let everyone that watches receive understanding. Let everyone that watches receive revelation. Father God, more than anything else, us here, and those out there that join themselves in faith with us. Let us never be the same again. Yes, Let us be changed yes, in every area and in every aspect of our lives. Yes, do what only you can do, Father. Change us, yes. spirit, yes. soul, yes. and body. As the word goes forth and the spirit moves let lives be transformed in jesus name jesus name people of god said amen, amen. give the lord a big hand clap and give a amen hallelujah well the spirit of revelation was flowing like a river today wasn't it even during our prayer time and pre-service prayer and intercession the spirit of Revelation knowledge started moving, and uh, I don't know. I think several of you got some understanding you never, you never have never understood before. Amen. Yes. <coughs> you had a road to Emmaus experience. Yes. Amen. That's where the Spirit opens our understanding that we might comprehend. It's Amen. called revelation knowledge. Now, with that, I'm going to warn you ahead of time. I'm going to break a tradition, and. Um, the reason for that, and I know I might get letters, I might get negative comments, I might get some sour faces electronically on the YouTube. Just brace yourselves. Uh, I'm going to obey God. Amen. Amen. I've been pastoring this church. We've been pioneering this church together for going on. I think we're into our ninth year, aren't we? Nine years. In that nine years, I never once taught on money or finance. I uh, literally got rebuked by the Holy Spirit. And the reason I got rebuked is I was, uh, I was just praying, spending some time in prayer, just loving on God, loving the Holy Spirit. And uh, if you don't know Pastor TC, I am a man of prayer. I pray a lot. I love prayer. That's my that's my life source is my time in the spirit of the Lord. <clears throat> I pray driving, I pray in the restroom, I pray mowing the yard. I'm literally talking in tongues when I'm weed whacking, I always pray. I pray almost without ceasing. I love prayer. I'm a man of prayer. Yeah. And I was praying the other day and I was just thanking God. He had done some things in my life. I just I just was grateful. I was, I was saying, Father, it's so, not, so wonderful. Thank you for blessing me in this particular area. Thank you for, for just showing your love for me in this area. I'm so grateful. And in areas where I wasn't even asking him consciously. He says that he'll give you the desires of your heart. Now, that's where we've always differed. I believe in prosperity. I believe in abundance. I believe in living 
come, a life worth more than enough. I believe in, in, in God gives you the desires of your heart. And he knew my heart, he knew what I wanted, he knows things that I want right now that I never voice to anybody, and I never tell anybody what I want. I, now and then I'll, there's two reasons for that. I'm just gonna get, I'm just gonna start pouring into you. Are you ready? Yeah. There's two reasons I don't let all, everything in my heart out than just random people. One, I never want you to say that I ask man for anything. Come on. I ask God, I talk to God. I ask Father God. I let my request be made known unto Him. Now there's times when I'll joke around and tell you things that like, you know, everybody knows I want an MG midget and if you don't know what color, you're not listening. Uh, before Jesus comes back, and you can buy a nice one, nice used one for $10,000. It's not a Maserati or nothing. And, uh, but my first car when I became a policeman out of the Marine Corps was an MG midget. And I missed that car ever since I got rid of it. I said, God, I'd like to have another one before Jesus comes back. Do I need one? Absolutely not. What is it? It's just a desire in my heart. I don't pray about it. I don't bang the doors of heaven over it. I, he, he knows my heart, just like some other things that he's done recently. He knew my heart. And just, just I've been faithful, serving him and loving him, and he, he doesn't forget your heart. Come on. He doesn't have that easy. Amen. He doesn't have a short memory. He loves us. So I never preach about bombarding heaven or losing principles of faith to get things. I'll tell you right now, write this down if you're taking notes. Your faith will greatly increase when you intentionally release your faith for the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? I mean this. This is exactly what our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and these things will be added to you. Your faith will explode and have unbelievable effectiveness if you're releasing your faith on purpose first to establish God's kingdom on the earth. Amen. And I guarantee you, when you get a busy about his stuff, fall in love with his things, he, he hasn't forgot what will, will bless you. He hasn't forgot what will bring a a song of joy to your heart. He hasn't forgot. He's blessed me lately with things that have been his desire that I haven't even thought of for years. So if you're going to immediately, if we're going to twist that into a principle that if I act excited about doing kingdom stuff, then real quick God's going to do something for me. You've already turned, you've already twisted it. Yeah. Come on. God knows when you're in love with his thing. God knows when his things are your life. Then you start seeing stuff pop up in your life. Amen? Amen. And all that's got to be done in an atmosphere of love, faith, and faithfulness. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when you seek first the kingdom of heaven, it's got to be a lifestyle, church. The kingdom of God has to be what I live for, not what I tap toward now and then. Amen. Not what, something that crosses my mind now and then. When it is my mind, it is my heart, it is my life, then God looks after all the desires of your life. Hallelujah. He knows whether it's real or not. Amen? Amen. So I'm just standing in my prayer room and I was just rejoicing. I was just talking to the Father and I was just telling him how grateful I am, how much I love him. And then something came over my heart. And this is where I got rebuked. Because sometimes you may not realize it, you don't know how much Pastor TC loves you. Because Pastor TC doesn't get involved in soulish things. I won't get emotional with you, so it's easy for the devil to trick you into thinking I don't care. I don't get tormented with you, so it's easy for your imagination to get brought into captivity. Amen. I don't get wound up with you, as Pastor Tony says, wrapped around the axle with you, so it's easy for the devil to make me look indifferent to you. Amen. Amen? I assure you, none of that's true. I pray for you ten times more than you could imagine. You're on my heart constantly. I love you more deeply than you could imagine. We love you, Pastor. We love you very, very much. Amen. But because I'm a man of the Spirit and a man of self-discipline, I know it's easy for the devil to twist things against me. 
but I'm not going to go around and try to put out fires and answer imaginations, and I'm not going to feel it. Amen. In other words, you got to be spiritual to understand how much I love you. <laughs> I know that's not be complicated. Amen. Hey, man, God, make it. Folks, most ministry is straight out of the soul. So if I'm not acting emotional, it's, it's, it's always twisted that you don't care. I'd rather have you respond with an answer to my need than just cry with me. Amen. Yes. Come on, brother. I would rather you agree with me than pray for me. Amen. 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 I'd rather you jump in this with faith with me and put 10,000 to fly than just whine with me over the thousand I can't talk her. You see how that works? So you've got to understand how how a spirit person is going to respond in love. It's a different kind of love. It's not soul love. It's not emotional love. It's spirit love. That brings an answer, not just a feeling. Come on. Come on, come on. I touch with the feelings of your infirmity, but I respond with an answer from the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you get that? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm standing in my prayer room, and my, my family came on my heart. And I said this almost out loud. It was loud enough I could hear my consciousness out of my spirit. And more did the, the, the Lord let lit into me. Maybe because I just haven't been willing to hear. I felt kind of like inspired now and then I immediately put it down. And you'll know why here in this minute. I was, in, I was in my prayer room and this came up out of my spirit almost so loud I thought I said it out loud, but I know I don't talk to myself. And as soon as I said it, tears formed in my eyes. I said, Father, why aren't my brothers and sisters bringing praise reports to church like you caused me to bring praise reports? He said, because you have neglected them. Oh my God, it was like an arrow in my heart. So what do you mean I've neglected them? He said, you have stolen a chance for them to come rejoicing with my goodness. Well, you're talking about another stab in my heart. So, my Lord, now I'm, I'm, there are real tears in my eyes. He said, you've been so afraid that people would call you a prosperity pimp and all these other things that you have stopped teaching my people about the kingdom principles of finances so I can't bless them the way I can bless you. You have done a disservice to your church. Oh my God. Boy, it just undid me. And I have, and it's true, you know me. I've been so careful not to look like I want anything out of you, look for anything out of you, or serve anything other than God because of all the affront against the prosperity message. I have just completely shut it down. And he said, you have suffered because of that. And man, you talk about spank. I felt like he just tore me open. I mean, to think that you have not been able to be blessed to the level he wants you blessed because I've shut the doors up through this ministry, I'm in trouble with God. And I said, I'm sorry, Lord. I, I, I'm very drastically sorry. And uh, I'm not going to start preaching on money every Sunday, but he's, he's very made it very plain that I have locked the, to some degree, I've locked the opportunity him to flow his goodness in your lives because I haven't given you the revelation of how it works. Come on, brother. So I said, I'll fix that Sunday. So we're going to look today at the kingdom and how it relates to faith and prosperity. Amen. 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 And it's, it's, it's going to bring some revelation to you. The kingdom and how it relates to faith and prosperity. Amen. Amen. Or faith in finances, however you like, or you can put faith in money. I don't care, but it's more than money. Amen. Prosperity is much, much more than money. But I'll tell you right now, uh, this is going to bring some revelation to you. Amen. Amen. Look, look with me to Matthew chapter twenty-five. I want to. I really want to teach this in one lesson today. Lord. I want to, and I don't want to wear the same out. So pray that I'll, I'll minister fast and pray that you'll receive Holy Spirit.
Holy Spirit revelation knowledge. Amen? Amen. Amen. Matthew 25, say amen when you're there. Amen. 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 We're going to begin by looking at verse 14. Can you hear me or is the air conditioner too loud? I can hear you. I can hear you. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 14. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is talking in my Bible that's red letters. Amen. 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 He says this. For the kingdom of heaven. Say kingdom of heaven. Kingdom, kingdom of heaven. heaven. What is the subject? The kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Now he's going to teach a revelation about the kingdom of heaven. And maybe it's never occurred to you, but this should jump right off the pages to you. It should just jump right off the pages as revelation knowledge. Are you ready? Okay, how does it how does the kingdom operate, Jesus? Are you ready? Amen. Amen. The kingdom of heaven as if a man say man. 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 I wrote right next to man, Jesus. Amen. Now here's where most of us miss the revelation. Uh, a man take traveling into a far country who called his servants, say us, us, and delivered unto them his goods. Say goods. Goods. Now he's saying the kingdom of heaven is like a man that gives things. Amen. That's revelation right there. The kingdom of heaven involves natural things. Amen. Hello. Amen. And here's how they operate together. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. Here he is given goods. What are the goods? Talents. What are talents? A talent is, here we go, teaches the kingdom. He taught them about money. Amen. Why do preachers teach about money so much? Because Jesus over and over and over again tied the kingdom to finances. Amen. And what you do with them and how finances work and respond to what you do with it is how the kingdom operates to a great degree. What is a talent? A talent is roughly about just a little bit under what we say is about $500, about $475 is one talent. So what did he do before he left? He gave them kingdom finances. Amen. Amen. To be responsible over finances. How's the kingdom of God operate? It's like a guy, before he leaves for a trip, calls his service together and says, Here's $500 for you. Here's $1,000 for you. Here's $10,000 for you. And then he leaves. Watch. Look at somebody say, money doesn't mean you're spiritual. Money doesn't mean you're spiritual. Lack of money doesn't mean you're spiritual. Lack of money doesn't mean you're spiritual. What you do with money should be spiritual. What you do with money should be spiritual. Because Jesus is using money right here to describe explicitly how the spirit of the kingdom works. Amen. Why would he do that? We're going to look at that later. Why did he talk about the rich man and Lazarus? Why did he talk about the rich young ruler? He's all, Jesus was always talking about you, money, and the kingdom. You, money, and the kingdom. You, money, and the kingdom. The rich young ruler could not receive an apostleship because he couldn't get rid of money. It ruled him. Amen. The beggar and Lazarus, the beggar and or the rich man and Lazarus was about what? The, what the guy did with his money while he was alive. Amen. Amen. Now he's teaching about what? Money, money again. Amen. What does a prophet man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? He's always tying in finances, money, the exchange of money, how money works in people's lives and what they do with it to how they relate to the kingdom. Amen. All the way through here. I'm very, very much aware of the prosperity of the kingdom of God, what God wants His covenant people to have, and what He's willing to do in my life. I have backed out of it because I didn't want anybody in this church to ever come when I say, well, now we're going to receive an offering. Because why? It's in the ghetto. People are poor. And what do they accuse all preachers of? Taking the widow's mind. Yeah. He said, I don't want that shot at me. 
I don't want anybody to ever accuse Pastor TC of having anything because of you. So I just never addressed it. But it's cost you deeply, and the Lord pointed that out to me very clearly. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now what? And straightway he took his journey, verse 16. Then he that had received five talents, or that's five times 475, several thousand dollars, right? Went and traded with the same. And the and and made them more, he made five times more with the five talents. So he took the thousand dollars, turned it into five thousand dollars. Amen? Amen. 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 Actually, it'd be twenty-five hundred dollars times five would be what? Twelve thousand. Huh? Twelve thousand five hundred dollars from what the Lord left with him. Amen? Amen. What did he do? He took what the Lord gave him and made it increase. He took what the Lord gave him and made it increase. Listen to what the words I'm saying closely. To what the Holy Spirit is saying closely. What this man did with what God gave him, what he did with what God gave him, was make it increase. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then he that uh, had gave five more, 17. And likewise, he that had received two had also gained two more. He doubled what he was given. Amen? Amen. Verse 18. But he that had received one talent now we're talking about the widow's mind. People with not as much. People that are barely getting by. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's... Now what? Je the, the good man Jesus gave him, gave him money. And it says, and he hid the Lord's money. So the Lord gave it to him, but who's God calls it? It's still God's money. Amen. Look at somebody say, what God gives me, what God gives God me is, to use is to use in stewardship. It still belongs to God. Still That'll belongs clear up a whole lot of mess about your bank account right now. And what you do with what you think is your money. Jesus never said it becomes your money. It becomes your stewardship. It's still the Lord's money. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, that's good already. And after a long time, he comes back. I don't have time to read everything. Look at Pastor. He comes back, he calls the guy he said, that has five talents. He said, what did you do? He said, I took what you gave me to stewardship over, and I multiplied it five times. What did Jesus say? You greedy, money-loving jerk. You missed the gospel completely. What did Jesus say? Well, well done. done. Now we think a talent is able to play the piano, able to play a violin, able to work the sound system. Money is talent. He just said a talent. In the Greek it means $475. It's a form of currency. So he said what you did with your money deserves a reward. Well done. In other words, I expected you to financially increase. That's why I gave it to you. Then he calls the guy with two talents. He said, what'd you do? I doubled it. Well, you, what? And you call yourself a servant of God? You money-loving jerk. No. Well done. But why, why did he say well done? Because he increased in what the Lord gave him. Amen? Then look down here at verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man. Reap me where you have not sown and gathering where you have not straw. And I was afraid and went and hid thy... Now he didn't recognize who it belongs to. He didn't say my talent. He said your talent. Somebody just pat your wallet, pat your purse, and remind yourself what's in it belongs to God. It never is yours. Glory to the Lamb. Yeah, if you don't wear a wallet, tap your heart. Because we're going to get to that in just a minute. 
We right, lose yeah. track completely. We think, well, it came from my job. It is God that gives you the power to get wealth that you might establish His covenant. Amen. 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 In every way, in every stage, you are nothing but a temporary possessor and steward over what was, is, and always will be God's. Amen. You have no right to make the decisions about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Now, I'll tell you something right now. I preach finances and kingdom stuff and money when I do preach it just as directly and prophetically, forcefully as I preach any other revelation of God. Amen. Because there's no less demand on it. God demands you live by faith. God demands you exercise dominion. God demands you steward His money. Amen. 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 And it's not money yet. It's my retirement, my bank account. You wrong, 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 wrong. Let me say hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And he said, I hid what was yours. How many of you are hidden got hiding God's stuff? How many of you got something socked away for a rainy day? You've taken his money, made it yours, socked it away for your rainy day. And you know what? When it rains, that's on you. God's not intervening on your rain, on your rainy day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good Amen. stuff. Amen. This will also explain to you, listen, look at those wealthy, sucking, multi-millionaire prosperity pants, those sorry outfits. Why are those rich people taking people's money? They're not taking anybody's nothing. I've never been to a Copeland convention and somebody stuck a gun in my back and said, now you're going to give. We're going to get it. Nobody made me go. No, maybe, nobody made me sit. Nobody made me dig into my wallet. Everything was spirit bad. And when I did take something out of my wallet, I didn't take anything. I didn't I didn't take my money out of my wallet. I took his money out of my wallet. Why would they keep getting so rich? Why does the rich get richer and the poor get poorer? Come on. I'm going to jump in your front yard. I've had people in this church that never gave $5 in a year. In an entire year. Not five bucks. But you can see them down in the restaurant when you drive by. You can see them walking the street with a 40 ounce when you drive by. They got money to play, run the streets and party and entertain their flesh. They come here and all oh, they're so broke. And they aren't broke compared to me. And they'll stay broke forever compared to me. Why? Why does the rich get richer and the poor get poorer? I'm going to answer for you right now. Stewardship. Watch what it says right here. I was afraid, and I went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there, there it is. You can have it back, that one talent you gave me. And his Lord answered him and said unto him, What? Well, that's fair enough as long as I get back what I gave you. You wicked and perverse steward. Thou wicked, and he answered and said, Thou wicked and slothful, lazy servant. Thou knew that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I straw not. Thou ought to therefore have put it, put my my money. Now he's telling you what talent is. Money. How does the kingdom work? It works like money works. It start, remember last week, it starts with the seed. You take that talent, you invest it through your life, and make the kingdom grow. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how the kingdom works, and that's how money works. And that's how money should be working for the kingdom. And if your money's not working for the kingdom, you're not seeking first the kingdom of heaven and its right way of doing things and walking in the righteousness of that so your money becomes unrighteous and you start becoming poorer. Amen. I just scrape and claw and can never get ahead. I take two steps forward and three steps backwards. That's right. Because of your money has been your money and you ignored every kingdom revelation of how to walk in the kingdom and operate his talents. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Glory be to God. Can you handle some more? Amen. Come on, brother. Are you learning Amen. anything? Yes. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, who's, does anybody have an amplified? Teresa, what translation do you have, Pastor? Can you read verse 27? See what it says in your translation. In the, in the King James, it says, Thou ought to therefore have put my money, God's money, kingdom money, to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I would have at least received my own with some interest added to it. God's interested in increasing your finances. Amen. He expects to find increases in your finances. Amen. He expects to find increases in the kingdom because of how you operate finances. Amen. Go ahead, sis. Well, then, you should have put my money on deposit. I return, I would have received it back with interest. You should have taken the kingdom money of God and used it wisely in the world system so that the kingdom's increased by the way that you operate worldly money. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. That doesn't get any more carnal than that. He said, how did, how's the kingdom work? The kingdom works exactly like the monetary system of the world works. And everything in this world belongs to God. All the finances belong to God. It is He that gives you the power to get wealth to establish the kingdom covenant. Yes, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you look at money, anything outside of that primarily, it is a tool that I am commanded to steward properly to work increase to establish the fuller manifestation of the kingdom of God in this earth. Amen. Anything other than that, you're misusing the stewardship of God. Amen. Amen. The kingdom by its very nature demands increase financially from you. The Lord by very personality rebukes you for not increasing financially. Oh, you greedy preacher. How am I going to feed the poor when his burrito's bigger than mine? Amen. How am I going to help the, the homeless when their tent is bigger than what I'm living in? The hypocrisy of this poverty mentality is that they all want to come to church for financial help. I, I had it a thousand times in my last church. Everybody off the street... I'm hungry. We'd load up three, four bags of groceries. Where did they come from? Somebody had to buy them. Who? Somebody with more money than the person standing at the door asking for the money. Amen. 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 Feed the needy. Okay, well, I've got to increase to feed the needy. Clothe the naked. I've got to have some clothes to give to the naked. Amen. Visit those who are in prison. i got to be out of prison and have enough gas in my car to drive to prison to minister to the prisoner. Amen. You can't do anything at the same level of those that demonically cursed with poverty. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll tell you right now, why is Copeland a billionaire? He gives. Because he gives and gives and gives and gives and gives. Why is Jerry Seville a millionaire? He gives. He gives and gives and gives. They don't broadcast it all over the place. They just take the arrows. I told you Jerry Sabell taught in our last church. Came and we and we saved him for us. That was a big offering. I, we gave him what, five thousand yeah, dollars? It was about five thousand dollar offering for one service. Now, folks, that's a good offering, especially for a hundred member church. This man didn't even think about it. He, we we received the offering, I handed it to him, he goes, and he looked at it, he said, Now this is my money, right? I said, Yes, sir. He said, You've released it? Under God and under heaven, into my stewardship. Yes, sir. He says, good. Gave it back to us and stood there and wrote a check for $5,000 and put it in the offering. Drove all the way from, from uh, I just went blank. Where he, where he Crowley. Lived. Huh? Crowley. From Crowley, Texas to Canton, Texas, on his own gas, preached for two hours, drove back to Crowley, and left a $5,000 offering. But they don't get up and wave that all over America. And I'm telling you, that's a fraction. They do that all everywhere they go all the time. 
You look at all the disaster videos, the first trucks are there, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, semi-trucks of water and food blankets. Every single natural disaster, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, first there. You don't hear of all the stuff that you can be driving down the street and the Holy Spirit say, go give him my car. Not your car, my car. Pull over, give the guy a car, and you stand there rejoicing and no way to get home. He just gave away his car. I have to call it Gloria. Come get me. Dozens and dozens of times. Now well, look at all those planes. He's giving away that many planes. And what's he teach? You don't give away no junk. So he said, I want you to give this preacher, he needs a good plane. You go get a new engine put in it, a new paint job put in it, get everything reupholstered, new, new carpet put in it, make it smell like brand new, fly it out there to him, say, here, brother, praise the Lord. Better than new. Why? Because it's all God's. That's the first revelation you've got to get. Everything in that bank account is the Lord's money. Everything in your wallet is the Lord's money. Everything in your purse is the Lord's money. Now, he's taking a trip. There, listen, Revelation number two. There's a day of reckoning coming. Did you increase for the kingdom? Or did you Amen. increase for yourself? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, that's good preaching already. Amen. Now look over. In other words, the first primary revelation you got to understand about kingdom and relationship the faith and finances is that this affects every area in your life you can't say my money god's money come on even if you do tithe all the rest of them is still god's money amen all tithe means is 10 percent is absolutely holy don't touch it you can stewardship the rest of it that's what that means you're a steward of the 90 10, he doesn't even allow you to stewardship. you got to give it back immediately. Yeah. And we're not even doing that. We certainly aren't stewardshiping the other 90. Ergo, we're under a curse when we shouldn't be. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look at Matthew chapter 6. Glory be to God. You know, that's good teaching already. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good teaching. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. How many of you can rejoice in that? Yes. Amen. How many of you know, Pastor, I'm not after a dime of your money? Amen. 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 Matthew chapter 6. Look at verse 19 with me. Lay not up for yourselves. That should be a red letter in your Bible. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust do corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust, rust do corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. Where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. And you know, I always read that. First of all, back up to where we started. Remember, he went, took a journey and came back. If you read past where I just got off track, the rebuke, the one with one talent, said you could have at least done something worldly with it and gotten worldly interest for me. Then he went on to say, take that which he has, Take it away from him. Take what I gave him to steward. Now that he has proved poor stewardship, take it away from him. Give it to who? The guy with five. The one with the most money, not the guy with two. Those money-loving preachers. God said to do that. Why? Because he's got more money because he did what was right with the first things God gave him. Amen. So God knows he's increased because he started doing right. I can trust him to take from this guy doing wrong and give it to him. That's why the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Amen. Hallelujah. So the number one revelation of poor stewardship between you and God 
is you keep losing ground. You never get ahead. Why? Because you're using his money like it's yours. And you're not operating in faith to do it God's way. You're operating in fear to do it the world's way. And you keep losing out. I was afraid, so I hid it in the bank for a rainy day, just in case. And it, it was gone. Financial collapse in my life. What happened? God took what was from you, gave it to the one you can trust. That already said, look what I'm doing. You can trust me. Hallelujah. Now watch very closely. Kingdom principle number two. First of all, let's go back. I just got off track again. What's the revelation of that? The day of reckoning isn't in heaven. I don't need more money in heaven. I always read that like in heaven, I'm going to lose out and get more money. I don't need money in heaven. Where's the day of reckoning? When the Holy Spirit says, this guy is, I've given him time. Remember that tree that wouldn't produce fruit? And, and, and the land manager came and said, dig it up and throw it away. It's not producing fruit. Why do you plant a tree? To get fruit to do what? Eat some and plant more. Amen. The kingdom's always about more. Why do you go into the world to preach the gospel? Get more people. Amen. The nature of the kingdom is increased. Amen. Isn't God greedy? So if you're not increasing for the kingdom, what's God's answer to that? You lose out. You get what you thought you had, you lose. And he takes and gives it to somebody that is all has a track record of life, proved they know what to do with it. I submit to you right now, you better take that to heart and start repenting quickly. If you're not a tither, and if you're not using your money for the kingdom, and expanding it first, seek first the kingdom. Then these things will be what? Added. Added. I don't see anything about poverty preaching in that anywhere. Where it comes in is don't, listen, right here. Rule number two. If you take what is God's, pervert it, you become a servant to something you weren't supposed to serve. Amen. If I take kingdom money, use it for selfish purposes, that's worldly investments, who's the prince of the world? Come on, talk to me. Yep. So now I've taken that which is divine, used it for that which is demonic. Now it's perverted with power over me, and I've got a new master that controls my finances. Amen. When's the day of reckoning? When the Holy Spirit here decides you're not going to do anything right. Boom. Then everything you make will be by your own flesh, your own blood, your own sweat. Hallelujah. Well, that's powerful Amen. stuff, folks. You don't need money in heaven. You don't need increase in heaven. It's not talking about when we stand in heaven. He said he comes back here. There's a day of visitation, which is also a day of reckoning. When God stops dealing with you about his money and says, okay, I just can't trust you anymore. Well, I hope I never get to that day. Amen. Amen. Now look at this. Lay not up your uh, lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust corrupt and thieves steal. Verse 20, but lay up for yourself treasures in where? Heaven. Heaven. Don't listen. I buried it in the ground. No, deposit it in heaven. How do I deposit finances in heaven? By doing kingdom things with it here. And not only will I get more money here, I'll get a reward there. Amen. Did he say, if you fed the hungry, you fed me? I'll get rewarded there. Did he say, if you've clothed the naked, you've clothed me? I'll get rewarded there. Did he say, if you visit the imprisoned here, you visited me? I'll get rewarded there. Not only will I get more money to use that way here, I'll get a reward there. Amen. While I'm doing it here, I'm depositing there. Hallelujah. 
Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Look at somebody say, you really can't, you really cannot lack when you do what's right with kingdom finances. You really cannot lack when you're doing what's right. With yeah, I can't finances. afford to tithe. You can't afford not to tithe. That's right. I can't afford to give. You can't afford not to give. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will be, there will your heart be also. I always thought this. Where my heart is, that's where my treasure goes. That's not what it said. That's not what it said. Your heart follows your money. That's why if all your money goes to self-entertainment, self-investment, self-satisfaction, -satis -satis your heart starts following that. And you become more fleshly. And then now, watch, watch, watch. Are you ready? For where your treasure is, will your heart be also. Have you ever seen anybody lose it? Because they put a scratch on my new car. They get all heartfelt and emotional because they put money into that. You don't walk away from something quickly you've invested into. So wherever you put your money, your heart follows. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that's why Darlene and I never get a divorce. I put too much money into it. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Teresa's going. Prosperity, yeah. <laughs> I cracked myself. I thought that was funny. Okay, there's the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What's that song? Is cheaper to keep her? <laughs> okay. Back in the anointing. Now watch. Verse 23. 